Hello everybody, welcome to what is well and truly the bottom of the barrel. In today's video, we're diving back into the world of Red Dead Redemption 2 to explore a popular theory regarding one of its characters. Whilst this theory has circulated for years, I have always dismissed it outright as ludicrous. But it's not a busy period content-wise, so I thought, what's the harm in actually entertaining it? even if only for entertainment. Many of you will be familiar with the original Red Dead game, Red Dead Revolver. It was far more bizarre than Red Dead Redemption and focused on the story of bounty hunter Red Harlow, on a quest to avenge the death of his family. Now Rockstar Games came out and confirmed that for obvious reasons Red Dead Revolver occurs in a different, separate universe to Red Dead Redemption, However, there's plenty of evidence to suggest a version of these events may have occurred within the Red Dead Redemption universe. As for how that's relevant in any way, shape or form to today's video, you may be familiar with a very particular lumbago-stricken Vanderlyn gang member, who appears both in Red Dead Redemption and Red Dead Redemption 2. I am of course talking about the lazy, almost entirely dysfunctional old man who we simply know as Uncle. The theory goes that Uncle and Red Harlow, or at the very least the Red Dead Redemption universe's equivalent to him, are one and the same. I know there's an aspect of complete absurdity to this, but we are going to explore it from both angles. Those being the angle from which this completely makes sense, and the other where it doesn't in the slightest. I will give my opinions slash interpretations come the end. So join me today as we ponder over the question, is Uncle Red Harlow? The first question that we are going to need to answer before we proceed with any of this is within the universe of Red Dead Redemption specifically, does Red Harlow even exist? First and foremost, I'd like to reiterate that Rockstar Games has stated that Red Dead Revolver exists in a completely separate continuity from Red Dead Redemption. You would think that was function as something of a dismissal of the entire theory, but if only it were that simple. However, Red Harlow's story is mentioned within the Red Dead Redemption universe in random encounters you can experience at campfires. This country used to be built of sterner stuff than it is today. Only 30 years back, there was men here in these parts who would stand up to authority. Very good, very good. You heard of that Red Harlow fellow? He was one of those men. Stood up to every man who blocked his path, Mexican army included. Nearly cost him his life, but he did. You a bounty hunter, mister? I have been. Why? No offense, I just know the type. I done some myself a couple years back. Like most things in life, it don't live up to the billing. And my brother, he's dead now, but he used to tell me stories about Red Harlow. Yep, you probably heard of him. Legendary bounty hunter bringing the savage outlaws of the frontier to justice. A man who watched his parents get murdered in front of him as a boy, but who uses that pain to become a better man and ultimately to wreak his vengeance. Hmm. From this, we can gather that in the world of Red Dead Redemption, Red Harlow is something of a folk legend at the very least. The stories told regarding him more or less follow the beats of the story of Red Dead Revolver, except every single campfire interaction seems to treat it as if those events really happened and Red Harlow was indeed a real person. The obvious response to this information is that they are simply easter egg interactions, and that very well may be the case, but considering it's on the nose and an easter egg is typically far more subtle, though not necessarily by hard and fast definition. It is my belief that these campfire interactions also serve as valid world building. My logic being regardless of how far out of the way you had to go to find it, if I was thinking about throwing in an easter egg, I would allude to something rather than spell it out. Therefore, I believe that it's entirely possible that the story of Red Harlow 
is a canonical tale told around campfires within the Red Dead universe, meaning it's entirely possible that Red Harlow as an individual may have existed in this universe too. Particular events of Red Dead Revolver itself are mentioned in these interactions, but that does not mean that the events of Red Dead Revolver are canon to Red Dead Redemption, as it's confirmed to not be the case. So what if the baseline of events did indeed happen in the Red Dead Redemption continuity, however, Red Dead Revolver is an exaggerated retelling. Think of it as a penny dreadful, a form of late 19th and early 20th century US popular fiction that focuses on melodramatic romanticised events and swashbuckling heroes that in the real world are sometimes based on real people of the times. For example, in Red Dead Redemption 2 we can find three Otis Miller dime novels, and at least another featuring Jim Boy Calloway and Landon Ricketts. Three characters who do, or at least did exist within the Red Dead canon. However, the stories told about them are either highly exaggerated or outright blatant fabrications. What if the events of Red Dead Revolver follow a similar vein and are romanticised variations of events that may have actually happened, or at the very least are falsified events about real individuals within Red Dead Redemption? So by that logic, it's entirely possible for there to be a version of Red Harlow in Red Dead Redemption, somewhere. Whilst if this is the case, it may be hard to discern Red Harlow as a character, or any events regarding him. At least it means he could be present in the same universe as everybody's favourite lazy old man. It's a ridiculously heavy assumption, but unless you make it, the entire theory we're about to discuss falls apart before it even begins. But sometimes you need to make a wild leap before you can start connecting dots. So, with that established, now we can actually explore whether or not Uncle is Red Harlow. Perhaps the most fascinating aspect to Uncle as a character is the fact that we do not know his name. At no point is he referred to as anything but Uncle, which is clearly a nickname considering his status as an elderly man who can often be found just existing around camp telling fascinating stories. He's the funny uncle. I doubt when he was born somebody said that's an uncle, so I think it's fair to say that nobody knows his actual real name. He even touches down on this. <laughs> now, let me tell you boys a story. And when old uncle was just a little boy, back when they called me nephew, I guess, <laughs> not uncle. This confirms what we already knew. Uncle is a nickname and not just an esoteric name. Technically, I suppose that uncle is a man with no name. The man with no name is an unnamed anti-hero protagonist portrayed by Clint Eastwood in the Spaghetti Western Dollars trilogy, including the movies A Fistful of Dollars, For a Few Dollars More, and The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. This trilogy is massively influential on modern westerns, along with many others, including the Red Dead games. Is there a strong relation here though? Perhaps not, but I certainly find it interesting that Red Dead Redemption and Red Dead Redemption 2 make it a point to never disclose any information about Uncle's true identity. As for his past, here is what we know about Uncle. He was born prior to the fall of 1849, believed to be somewhere in Ohio, losing his parents at the age of nine years old. Tough as arriving in a new city, both your parents newly dead, no one looking after you except some scumbags you meet on the street, folks starving, people desperate. Good morning, Arthur. How old were you? Nine. Nine years old, I've been living on my wits. Besides this, Uncle can be heard recounting tales about the time he went selling camping supplies in East Africa, where he claims the locals worshipped him like a god, which is incredibly unlikely 
Due to his difficult upbringing, he resorted to a life of petty crime, and that at some point led to him just showing up in the Vanderlind gang. Supposedly, he's known Dutch for a fairly long time, and his carefree and laid-back but otherwise useless demeanour is somewhat endearing to members of the gang, hence he's kept around. Besides that, not a lot is really known about who this man truly is, and theories aside, it's quite fascinating that it is handled this way. And I can't help but think that especially in Red Dead Redemption 2, there is an underlying meaning behind it. Originally, in Red Dead Redemption, Uncle is portrayed as a cantankerous and lazy old man. But in Red Dead Redemption 2, his personality is greatly expanded upon, with moments where he appears more perceptive and intelligent than he often prefers to let on. That's the problem with you, Dutch. Always reading. Always been an issue with you. Not with you. <laughs> I got common sense. I don't need to read. In fact, I need not to read. It pollutes the mind. Does it? Yeah. <laughs> I've seen it do it to you. <laughs> I'd be careful, old man, that that court jester act doesn't wear a little thin. <sighs> That's his problem in one. He wants to be an American king with his knights. <laughs> I heard that. Ooh. I want no such thing. You do. I don't. I just want better than this for us. Better? <laughs> Your kind of better. <sighs> <laughs> oh, I can't stay mad at you, old man. Okay. <laughs> but right now, I'd like to kill you. <sighs> Put me out of my majesty, your misery. <laughs> <laughs> Away with you! <laughs> there. You see, gentlemen? There goes the greatest man we know. Even he's lost. This is the age of being lost. The age of running to avoid thinking. I've said it before, but you all got it. This sense of being lost. All of you. Well, apart from old uncle here, but you got it. And that's a fact. Uncle is no stranger to mixing his banter with truth bombs. A lot of what he says is kindly spirited, but frighteningly apt, and he has no problem giving that insight even to characters he knows to be killers. Whilst in the moment it comes across as him being entertaining, it's actually incredible insight into the character he's speaking about, this Dutch example being the key one. So perhaps Uncle has more going on than he likes us to think. However, the biggest point that raised the theory stems from a visit in town in polite society, Valentine style in chapter two. Sheriff's always on the right. Sure you can pick up some bounties there, Arthur. Heaven forbid you put your head on the line. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a young man's game. <laughs> Uncle, what are we doing? Well, we're gonna do what any self-respecting maniac does. Put the women to work. So that's how you see yourself, is it? A maniac? Well, in my youth, I used to be known as the one-shot kid. <laughs> okay. I'm not gonna ask why. You are a sad man, Arthur Morgan. It's interesting that the first thing Uncle points out upon arrival in Valentine is the sheriff's office, pointing out that bounty hunting is a young man's game. He also goes on to say that in his youth, he used to be known as the one-shot kid. If Arthur's response and Uncle's reaction to that response is any indication, Arthur took it as a euphemism for something else. But the theory goes that Uncle is suggesting that once upon a time, he himself was a gunslinger of some description. Whilst Uncle proves that he can handle a gun to an agreeable extent, the times where we see him use one are far from impressive displays. But if you are out of practice for long enough, maybe you will lose some of that ability or at least instinct. All we know really for sure is it's clear Uncle has a past that he avoids talking about, at least plainly. 
instead of opting to tell ambiguous anecdotes like claiming he was born sometime between the fall of 1849 and the fall of Rome when asked by Arthur how old he was. Now I guess we should look at things from the Red Harlow perspective. Red Harlow was the only son of Nate Harlow, a gold miner, and his wife Falling Star. Along his matrilineal line, he's a descendant of the Red Wolf Native American tribe. When he was young, his parents were killed when outlaws invaded their estate. Years later, Red had become an experienced gunslinger and bounty hunter, sporting both scars on his face and burns on his hand. No specific dates are given early in this story to my knowledge, and I've seen plenty of posts with certain dates on them, and it appears as if they have been pulled out of somebody's rectum, above all else. For the ballpark is Red Harlow was born between the 1850s and 1860s, as the main bulk of the game occurs in the 1880s, and Red appears to be in his 20s, and at a push maybe his early 30s. Uncle claims he was born either in or sometime prior to 1849, so he would be at the upper end of that, if not a little bit too old for that timeline to apply to him. Following the end of the story, it's completely unclear what happens to Red next and what he does with the rest of his life, and that consistently carries over into the stories told about him in the Red Dead Redemption games, Simply put, he takes his vengeance for the murder of his parents, and then disappears. Nothing is known about his life following these events. Similarly to how nothing is truly known, or at least truly believed, about Uncle's life prior to around this time, prior to him joining the Vandalin gang. So let's look at the similarities and differences between the characters of Uncle and Red Harlow. Red Harlow grew up on a small farm until his parents' death, and Uncle claims that once upon a time he was a rancher. Red Harlow was a bounty hunter, and Uncle appears to have knowledge of that same trade, even claiming he was once known as the one-shot kid, bearing in mind it's unclear how much, if any, of Uncle's stories have any truth behind them. Appearance-wise, Red Harlow had facial scars on both sides of his face and his nose, and whilst Uncle appears to have a scar across his nose in Red Dead Redemption 1, he sports no such scar tissue in 1899, though his face is covered now by a grey beard. He also doesn't boast any particularly noticeable scar tissue on his right hand, whereas Red Harlow's hand scars were so bad that he mostly has it covered up. From the age perspective, I'd say that Uncle is slightly, if not significantly, older than Red Harlow, or at least the romanticised version that we got to experience in Red Dead Revolver. Bearing in mind that Red Dead Revolver in itself is not canon to the Red Dead Redemption universe, meaning if those events happened in the Red Dead Redemption universe in any way, then they went down significantly differently, or with different kinds of people, and the characters were complete romanticised versions of themselves. So I think it's fair to say that these events, the characters, their ages, their very appearances, and so on and so forth are certainly somewhat subjective due to a lack of reliable sources to verify that information. When you think of things from that perspective, Uncle could easily have been the Red Dead Redemption Universe version of Red Harlow, though that version of Red Harlow would have to be vastly different to the version of Red Harlow from Red Dead Revolver. But at that point, we've convoluted the timeline and the events to the point where the events of Red Dead Revolver may as well have not happened in any capacity, and therefore the theory loses all ground that it's standing on. I'm not denying that Uncle's past is certainly a curious one. The absence of his real name or any reliable information regarding his backstory makes for a compelling character to make theories about. Even if that means only speculating about how his lower back came to hurt. Because it's clear that Rockstar, especially when approaching his depiction in Red Dead Redemption 2, 
presented Uncle in such a way that questions about his past would naturally be raised. Whether his history is mundane or exciting, it's certainly a mystery. But my personal opinion is that I don't believe that Uncle is Red Harlow, and I'll explain why. There's limited connections between the two characters. You can draw certain parallels, but the moment you put them under a microscope, you realise how inconsequential these similarities actually are. As for the differences, they are simply far too significant. Furthermore, Red Dead Revolver's events aren't necessarily canon to Red Dead Redemption. By that I mean there are campfire stories that allude to the idea that some version of those events are canon to the Redemption universe, but to what extent those events would diverge from what we experience in Red Dead Revolver is an unknown quantity. Therefore you can't truly garner any reliable information from Red Dead Revolver about Red Harlow and you can't gain reliable information about anything from Uncle anyway. Simply put, I think it's fair to say, the topic of anything Red Dead Revolver related when it comes to the Redemption universe is simply far too convoluted to come to any concrete conclusions. And that's sort of what Red Dead is. Red Dead Redemption is the collision of the myths and the realities of the American frontier. Where one ends and the other begins is completely open to interpretation by the player. So I suppose what that means for Uncle's backstory depends entirely on how you frame the information provided. And perhaps that was deliberately done. Maybe Rockstar want you to think there is more to this effectively nameless man. Because the truth is, all we actually know about Uncle is how he presents himself to us, and that is done in such a way that nothing else he claims, or nothing else that's said about him can be taken as reliable information. To take that and to apply it to an equally as unreliable story, at best you're going to come out knowing less than going in, which I feel as if many people will be saying down in the comments section. You're welcome. But perhaps the idea was for the theory to be floated only to be shot down as ridiculous, as that is exactly what I have done for years. In Rockstar games, there is always something right under your noses that you may never realise is there. It's one of the most truly fascinating aspects of these games' many methods of environmental storytelling. I believe Uncle as a character is absolutely handled in a way that makes us ask more questions. But in my personal view, under scrutiny, the Red Harlow theory certainly doesn't hold much water. Because nothing does when it comes to good old uncle. And that, my friends, brings us nicely to the end of today's video. Thank you all for watching, I really hope you've enjoyed. Be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends, and let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. If you like history, maybe check out our history channel Decades. There's over 50 videos on there for you to dive into if that's your thing. But if not, no worries, there's plenty of content coming out here as well. Regardless, there is a link that you can find in the description. As for this channel, I want to do a major like story analysis slash critique of Star Wars Jedi Survivor, so I've been working on that. It's coming along nicely, but I get the impression it's going to take time. Moving on from that, with any luck, I'll be seeing you all very soon with another video at some point, but please, until next time, take care, and goodbye.